Well, I love the tone of the film, The Ghost in Our Machine, because there's not really an angry sort of protest message to it. It's done in a very, I don't want to say soft, but I'm, I'm not able to come up with a better word right now, but it's, it's done in a very artful, soft way that really does make you look at it um, in a way that doesn't beat you over the head. Did you experience compassion fatigue? That's my new favorite word right now. I like yeah. that. <laughs> well, just um, part of why I was drawn to Joanne um, and asked Joanne to be the protagonist in the movie is because she's very radiant and hopeful and um, charismatic. And, and I, did, you know, I wanted that positive message leading the, the, the um, experience in, in the movie. Um, rather than something that was quite sort of heavy because the subject is so heavy there's so much gravity to it it's quite gruesome and mm -hmm. horrifying when you really start mm -hmm. unpacking it and realizing this the staggering statistics and um, the the violence that is so inherent in these industries it's so difficult and of course people don't want to watch that so it was all about trying to figure out the right approach, the right tone, and also, I think, using Joanne as that entry point. Um, the audience can experience, oh, that's what an animal rights activist looks like. Right. That's, what she, that's what it feels like. She's, she has these special, amazing, friendly and affectionate relationships with all these animals that she meets. She loves them, she has empathy for them. And, and I like people. <laughs> and you love people. Yeah. And you love the environment. So, you know, um, I think when I first came to start uh, f figuring out what, what, what's the story, what's the angle for this movie, it was at a point where I really was quite aware of the challenge of making this film. Just the inherent sort of built-in challenge of understanding the social resistance out there about this subject. And that people can, within any movement, can sort of become, so they live sort of like they're in bubbles and they lose perspective. And, and I was determined to not lose that perspective and to remain somewhat critical so that, like when I'm doing, when I'm at a Q&A after the film, my answers just instinctively are for the person in the audience that doesn't maybe understand mm -hmm. or hasn't really considered um, any of this yet. I'd rather speak to that person than to all my friends in the room. Not, I mean, no offense to my friends. I get it. Yeah. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. But I would rather try to um, reach someone that hasn't, that sort of is on the other side of the glass, who maybe cares but doesn't really get that this is morally significant and that we, it's a collective problem and that we should all care. So that's really my goal with the film and, and all of our goal, like everyone that worked on it, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't just like a crew that consisted of vegans, you know, sure. there was a whole range of different types of people um, that, that worked on this film. I wanted to work with the most talented people that were very sensitive and open and um, everyone was impacted. Everyone had their own journey. And I think that, that says something, you know, about the subject matter that we all have a journey with it.